she draws closer, she is suddenly overwhelmed by powerful emotions. I stood and was looking over the kiva, and I don't know how to describe it, but it feels like downloads are happening. Like there's a whole lot of activity. Eileen's uncontrollable feelings continue deep into the night. Unable to sleep, she wanders the mysterious ruins of Chaco. So I was in a kind of an altered state, I would call it. There was so much activity in my consciousness. It was just, I was vibrating, I was alive and awake. It's scary and exciting at the same time. Venturing a short distance from the campsite, Eileen is suddenly confronted by an astonishing sight. I looked up and there was this lit object in the sky. It looked massive, like a massive structure. Inexplicably, the lights mirror Eileen's inner feelings of elation. There was a vibration in the air that was just intense and magical and wonderful all at the same time. Mesmerized, Eileen is once again overwhelmed by the same forces that swept through her body earlier that day. I'm standing there staring at this, thinking I was having just the most incredible, epiphany, joyful experience probably of my life. What could explain Eileen's powerful, uplifting experience when others have terrifying encounters? Some believe the answer lies with Chaco's builders, the Anasazi and their use of a science called archaeoastronomy. Archaeoastronomy is based on the concept that the Anasazi people had a lot more insight into the movement of not only the sun and the moon, but also the stars. And when we look at the features of Chaco Canyon, there are solstice alignments, there are equinox alignments, and there are even alignments to the sun itself.